This video is about a prophecy of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, one of many of his miracles that for some reason many people seem to ignore today. Arab countries are home to some of the world's most impressive mega buildings, including skyscrapers, luxurious hotels, and iconic landmarks. Burj Khalifa in Dubai, the Pearl in Qatar, Kingdom Tower in Jeddah. Today, we are talking about how Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam predicted this 1400 years ago. But before we start, consider checking out our Patreon and check out our merch store. And do not forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. The Arabian Desert is a large desert region covering about 2.3 million square kilometers on the Arabian Peninsula. It's one of the harshest environments on Earth, known for its extreme temperatures, aridity and rugged landscapes. Temperatures in the Arabian deserts can reach as high as 49 degrees Celsius during the day. The lack of water sources and vegetation make it challenging environments for life to thrive. Many areas of the desert are inhabitable. The Arabian desert is also subject to severe sunstorms. These can last for days and severely affect visibility and travel. This is exactly where Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was born and this is where he has lived. This is where he grew up. This is where he spent his childhood and this is the place from which the message of Islam and the message of Allah has started. In the last century, the Middle East and Arabia changed so much and Prophet Muhammad ﷺ predicted all of this before the discovery of oil, the Arab region was primarily a nomadic society compared to other regions of the world at the time. The region had limited economic developments and was considered relatively poor. Prior to the discovery of oil, the economy of the Arabian Peninsula was based on traditional activities such as farming and fishing and trading and animal husbandry. The region had a limited amount of infrastructure and the main means of transport was camel caravans. The climate and geography of the region also made farming difficult in many areas. Although Arabia had a rich and cultural heritage and was a center for trade, the region was generally considered underdeveloped. It lacked the industrial infrastructure necessary for sustained economic growth. The discovery of oil in the 1930s revolutionized the region's economy, making it one of the world's richest regions on the planet. In 1908, oil was discovered in Persia, in Iran, by the Anglo-Persian Oil Company. Oil was then discovered in Bahrain, by the Bahrain Petroleum Company. And in 1938, oil was discovered in Saudi Arabia by the California Arabian Standards Oil Company, later known as Aramco. These discoveries had a significant impact on the economies of the Middle Eastern countries. They transformed them into major oil producing nations. The Middle East remains an important source of global oil production today. Several of these countries are amongst the world's top oil producers. Oil has become the most important source of income for many Arab countries, and the revenues from the exports of oil have provided a significant boost to their economies. Oil wealth allowed these countries to invest in infrastructure, education, and healthcare. This, in turn, attracted foreign investments and created jobs. There is a very popular hadith of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, this hadith was told by Omar, my God be pleased with him, when he said, He came to us while we were sitting with the Messenger of Allah Almighty, Prophet Muhammad wasallam, a man who was very white in face, very white in clothes, black of hair. Nobody knows who he is. No signs of travel could be seen upon him, and none of us recognized him. He sat down facing the Prophet wasallam with his knees touching his, and he put his hands on his thighs and said, O oh Muhammad, what is Islam? Prophet Muhammad said, To testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that I am the Messenger of Allah, to establish regular prayer, to pay zakat, to fast in Ramadan, and to perform hajj to the house, meaning the Kaaba. He said, You have spoken the truth, but sadaqs. We were amazed by him. He asked a question, then told him that he had spoken the truth. 
Then he said, O oh Muhammad, what is Iman, also known as faith? He said, to believe in Allah, his angels, his messengers, his books, the last day, and the divine decree, meaning the Qadr, both the good of it and the bad of it. The man said to Prophet Muhammad wasallam, You have spoken the truth, Qad Sadaqt. Brothers, before we continue, consider supporting the channel by checking out our upcoming series of documentaries on Patreon. These videos will be exclusive to our Patreon audience and won't be posted on YouTube. We also have a merch store. Pick an item with the design of your liking as a way to support the channel. Thank you so much. Then he said, Oh Muhammad, what is Ihsan? He said, To worship Allah as if you see Him. For even though you do not see Him, He sees you. Then he asked, When will the hour be? Prophet Muhammad said, the one who is being asked about it does not know more than the one who is asking. The guy asked Prophet Muhammad wasallam, then what are its signs? Prophet said, and when you see barefoot naked destitute shepherds competing and constructing tall buildings. Umar says, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, met me three days later and asked me, do you know who that man was? I said, Allah and his messenger knows best. He said, that was Jibreel who came to you to teach you your religion. Brothers, let's go back to destitute shepherds competing and constructing tall buildings. This is not an insult to the Arabs, by the way. In fact, according to At-Tabarani told by Anas radiallahu anhu, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَمَنْ أَحَبَّ الْعَرَبَ فَقَدْ أَحَبَّنِي وَمَنْ أَبْغَدَ الْعَرَبَ فَقَدْ أَبْغَدَنِي Meaning, he who loves the Arabs loves me, and he who hates them hates me. Prophet Muhammad wasallam is an Arab, and the first hadith is not an insult to the Arabs. The hadith was a prediction of the economic explosion that took place in the Middle East after the discovery of oil. Another version of the hadith told by Al-Qurtubi says, وَأَن تَرَى الْحُفَاتَ الْعُرَاتَ الْعَالَى رِعَاءَ الشَّاءِ يَتَطَاوَلُونَ فِي الْبُنْيَانِ which is the most famous version of the hadith. Al-Hufat al-Urat al-Ala means those who are barefoot, referring to the past lives of the Arabs before the discovery of oil, poor and underdeveloped. Ri'a al-Shai means camel herders, again highlighting the fact that the Arabs were underdeveloped and living a primitive life before a sudden economic explosion in Arabia. Yatatawaluna fil bunyan does not only predict that the Arabs will build some of the highest buildings on earth, but it means that they will compete in order to build such high buildings. And this is exactly what we've seen in the last few years. We see these Arab countries actually competing in order to build the highest building possible. Again, how can a quote-unquote normal human being predict what's going to happen 1400 years later? Certainly, he is not normal. Peace be upon him. And this is not a mere coincidence. It's worth to note that building these high buildings and megastructures is not random and generally not a useless and vain endeavor. Arab countries are experiencing rapid economic growth and building high buildings is a sign of progress and development. High buildings also attract foreign investments and tourists. So building mega buildings is a bet made from Arab countries and investors with the expectation of generating great return on investments in the future. Overall, the construction of high buildings in Arabian countries is a combination of practical economic and symbolic reasons and reflects the region's rapid developments and growth. So back to the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad wasallam. How can a man in Arabia 1400 years ago predict such a rapid and huge economic shift in the Middle East. And this is not the only time Prophet Muhammad wasallam predicted something that will happen in the future. In this channel alone, we have presented many cases that prove that Prophet Muhammad wasallam was the true messenger of Allah Almighty. Brothers, before I finish this video, consider supporting us on Patreon and supporting the production of our Jinn series exclusive to Patreon. Grab an item from DP2 Islam's merch store and support the channel that way. Like and subscribe of course and activate the bell icon to watch the video before everybody else. Assalamu alaikum.